gaps diminishing. 34 seconds. Sage Tola Mondial have put on the hurt. And uh, I'm afraid the man who's been stung here is Ryan Gibbons of South Africa for dimension data. He's been caught off the back. He's got a technical. I believe it's a puncture. Meanwhile, uh, no diminution at all in the pace. And this is looking lively. Katusha want to light it up for Plankett and Zabel. Zabel finished six on day one. I believe he is the chosen son. So. Uh, uh, Baptiste Plankett will be uh, building bridges for Zabel today. We'll see. Um, 36 seconds, 38 now. The breakaway have picked up the pace just a little bit. It's uh, more difficult for a big bunch such as this to get through some of the narrowing sections. There are some pinch points, and the worst of them comes after the start-finish line. Others just starting to chug out there. Probably job done, but um, this does not bode well. Ian Stannard could have been a big battering ram later on today. Uh, it looks like he's got himself a puncture as well. They'll be hoping for uh, Vinyoski potentially, or maybe Danny Van Poppel. Viviani, I'm not sure about after his efforts. He finished 41st on the opening stage, so we'll see whether he's motivated today. In fact, he is. Viviani is in the pack there. You can also see that uh, uh, Tom Van Esbrock and Wouter Vippert are looking lively for Cannondale Draypack, but I think they're working safety first for Set Van Mark, who's got designs on the title here. 70.3 to go, Brian. We're approaching that uh, little chicane that we're so worried about. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll get to, to see it this time. Uh, but uh, they're just coming over this, or uh, the bunch are coming over this uh, rise. Uh, but the break of five, just about uh, maybe about 500 metres away from the, this uh, left-hand turn. And if we stay with them, we'll get a chance to see it. The gap coming down to 32 seconds. Now, a lot of the teams uh, starting to uh, come towards the front. Full gas, not at the front of the peloton. But uh, AG2 are starting to ride. They're starting to think of uh, possibly their man, Oliver Nason, the uh, Belgian champion. He's up against it today. This is this uh, left-hand turn now with 1,200 metres to go. Yeah, here we go. So that's your left-hander. Now, watch out for the chicane. The motorcycle seems to be in just about the wrong place at the moment um, because it's the line that he's taking that these guys are going to want to. It's a little bit technical, very, very short order. Here you go. Uh, so we're seeing it in reverse, if you like. <laughs> There's the right-hander. Think of it backwards. Um, there's your uh, left-hander, and then you run to the line. Now, this is more like it. Uh, this next time by will be very uncomfortable. Here's the left-hander that we're talking about at 1,200 metres. Let's hope we stay with these pictures. Then it's the race to the church, but look at that. It's suddenly two and three wide from about six wide. There is no room for error. You have to be in the right place. And indeed, you, you don't want too many... <sighs> Well, fancy taking the helicopter away at that point. There's your chicane. It was a right lefter. As we go and look at uh, these guys of no consequence, <laughs> never mind. Let's hope that we get it all next time by. I think we will, because these guys are going to get caught. So they're going to sail round this uh, sort of gentle sort of bleed left, if you like, which announces the finish line. Um, once we are there, we've got a double right-hander to take to get out of town. Now, I think it's a danger today, right now, when we hear the bell, I'm not sure whether it's going to be a ding-dong or a tingling. We'll see in a few moments' time as uh, they take the bell. I'm, I'm hoping we're going to hear it or at least see it in a few moments' time. And then we've got the double right once we get uh, past the start-finish line. I'm sure the bell needs to be starting to be rung about now. But anyway, we're hearing the beating of the hoardings instead. Oh, finally, there he is. Oh, he sounds like he's got a good old clapper going on down there. So the bell rings upon our breakaway and the clock starts to tick. And it, it, meanwhile, these guys have got to take that uh, sort of gentle bleed to the left here at around about 250 metre mark. And then it unwinds with a view of the start-finish line. Demar's men are here and the bellman has got a short job to do today because they're not that strung out. So uh, don't feel too sorry for him. So they come through. I'm hoping that we see this uh, double right in a few moments' time. It's been causing us so much worriment. 28 seconds, 29. They, they've kept the pace back just a little bit, but the road does narrow. We go country-style in a few moments' time, and it's likely to back up with that pinch, Brian, for these guys at the rear. Yeah, I don't think it'll be too much a problem uh, for uh, most of these riders. We've already seen it uh, once already before, but uh, it does narrow down just as we start to, to leave the town. But uh, as we come through that... Uh, the bell there. Uh, the, uh, I know we're in Belgium here, but the uh, two French teams of France, the Jeune Age 2 are now trying to take control of the front of the uh, the peloton. Just looking at the uh, the rear of the peloton, I saw uh, Scott Thwaites and uh, one other rider with them, so it does look as if they're trying to wait at the back to see if uh, Ryan Gibbons can get back on and they can take him back up to the front. Yeah, I think it's a tall order. 
um, especially this late on. Pace picking up, as you can see, and we're going to get even narrower in a few moments' time. These guys are already on the narrowest part, uh, narrowest part of today's course. And, in fact, uh, they go over just a little rise, and then they pop out onto the big highway. There's a gentleman who looks like he's uh, enjoyed Christmas last year. Still needs to, still some work to do, Humphrey. Uh, 25 uh, seconds, 24 now, as they'll come back and onto the highway, just sailing by the... Uh, uh, loose leaf broccoli by the looks of things and we've got rain uh, this is not a drop bead on because we're in a helicopter here uh, so we have the suggestion of rain at the moment this could add yet another element to the day Brian yeah it's just going to be a, a, a very uh, dangerous sprint if it does uh, in fact rain especially in that uh, last uh, 1500 meters there with the technical element of it I'm uh, just looking at uh, Ryan Gibbons has made it to the back of the peloton. He has got, uh, looks as if he's got uh, Scott Thwaites and uh, Johan Van Zeel to try and get him up to the, the point. No real panic at this moment in time because it does open up into the uh, the wide roads. Uh, there's no point pushing and shoving in this narrow road to try and get to the front. So if I was uh, uh, Ryan Gibbons, I would just ease fire at the moment and then we'll go on to the main road. It'll be a lot easier to be brought back to the front by his teammates. 13.4 kilometres to go. Still 25 second margin to our breakaway. Who's here sprint-wise? Well, for those of you who've missed it, um, it's real royalty. We've got Marcel Kittel who messed up on the opening day. We've got Viviani who've messed up on the opening day. We've got Damaru who messed up on the opening day. We've got Dreipel who, well, I suppose by his own standards, messed up on the opening day. They've got to go better. Dylan uh, Gronenwegen, who won up the Champs-Élysées, is here. Jempi Drucker for BMC. We've got Greipel, of course, the aforementioned, for the red and white of Lotus Sedal. Kittel in the blue of uh, Quickstep, naturally enough. Phil Bauhaus had a stunning, um, uh, almost snatched the victory from Peter Sagan for Team Sunweb in uh, the stripes, black and white. Uh, we, of course, have Viviani in his familiar sky livery, um, back to their usual dark blue colour drifting away from the white that I thought looked so nice in the Tour de France, but anyway. Um, we've got uh, Magnus Court Nielsen will be hoping to go well. Uh, Van Poppel for uh, Trek Factory Systems. Boy, Van Poppel, that is. Um, we will see Trek Segafredo, I beg your pardon, with uh, Ted Tunes doing some leading out as well. Plenty of other fast men to conjure with, not least uh, Jempy Drucker, I don't think I mentioned. Um, Kump, Swift, why not? Uh, Vippert, Reckert. Um, Plankert and any other Ertz along the way. 30 seconds with 12.4 kilometres remaining. And there's Peter Sagan. This could well have been built for him, this finish. He likes to go freestyle. He's a good bike handler. Let's see how he goes. Well, a few more spots of rain uh, now starting to trace across the camera here at the helicopter. It looks like it hasn't fallen with any great impact on the ground. These guys, I'm afraid, are doomed by the looks of things, unless something very strange happens. Wide highway for everyone to play with. Uh, well, we've got uh, five lanes here, which is rather unusual in Belgium. Um, despite all the trucks delivering potatoes and the like. Uh, they have to make this turn uh, with a little bit of street furniture and some will be caught out. Let's watch the bunny hopping, shall we, as they get to this with our finally fully furled uh, windmill. I told you we were going to see it again. And here they are, locked together. They can't all stay like that because um, there is a little bit of street furniture to deal with and they're all skirmishing out the front. Everyone wants a proper view of this turn. Each one becomes ever more important. Yeah, no real... Uh danger at the moment uh, the gap only 26 seconds and uh, a lot of the team is going to kind of trying to save their powder dry a little bit uh, obviously a little bit more pressure on the likes of uh, quick step floors in the blue uh, to come up a little bit earlier uh, they're out foiled in the uh, first stage uh, sitting back too long but uh, I don't think these riders will be able to stay away but still with 11.2 kilometers to go to the finish a long long way to, to put your whole team towards the front and uh, for your sprinter but you still have uh, a few of the teams looking after the GC contender and uh, trying to keep out of trouble. I did notice that uh, Viviani was being looked after towards the uh, front of the group, but just on the right-hand side, you can see Scott Thwaites and Jan Van Zeel of uh, Dim Dimension Data there, so they have got their man back to the front. Yeah, they have. Good job for them. Uh, Van Esbrook and Wout uh, in a good place as well. Um, Katusha Alpacin working for uh, Planker and Rick Zabel. I think it's Rick Zabel will be their chosen son today. Um, Brian, um, I know on stage one, uh, I beat you up choosing Sagan with a uh, with a side bet of Phil Bauhaus. Who are you going for today? 
uh, Sagan and Phil Bauhaus. <laughs> I think uh, Kito, ha I think uh, Quick Step have to get it right today, and I think uh, Kito will be uh, the man uh, that uh, has been told he, he needs to win today. Um, I'm going to go for Andre Greipel today, just because I like Andre Greipel, and I like to see him win. I think he needs cheering up, so that's the reason for that. Any cheeky side bet? Um, cheeky side bet, uh, I'll just go for the man that punctured uh, Ryan Gibbons. <laughs> hey. Nice, I like that. That would be a story. Um, I'm going to go, uh, it's hardly a side bet, but I'm going to go for Dylan Gronenbegen of uh, Team Lotto. Yeah, I'm, 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 all right, then. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Um, uh, oh. Magnus Court Nielsen. There we are. <laughs> 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 10 kilometres out. I know it's not really a cheeky side bet, but I'm sticking no. with it. Uh, tw <laughs> 22 uh, uh, seconds now with 10 kilometres to go. And our break is having some fun. Hopefully you are at home too. I love this race. Uh, in its first incarnation, of course, is the Enico. I know it was called other things in its very first incarnation, but anyway. Um, but now, sponsored by Big Back, it's got a, uh, a future to it, which is great because it's a terrific race. And in fact, uh, a sort of an amalgamation of many classics towards the end of it uh, is going to bring you some yet more fun. They're starting to dive bomb up the inside. A lot of younger, the ones who are being tempted. And the reason is, look at this big compression right now. They've got work to do to reassemble themselves. That's going to knock back Dylan Gronewegen's hopes, I am sure. How many lead out men do you need to have with you when you're through that technical section, which unwinds at the uh, at the Flamme Rouge? Um, you probably need to, uh, probably uh, two uh, would be the perfect thing, but I think it's going to be very difficult for that. So as soon as you come through that chicane, if you've got to list uh, one teammate there and the speed is up there, that'll be okay. But what uh, concerned me about uh, that overhead shot was uh, the uh, the blue jerseys of uh, Quick Step Floors were still uh, yep. far down the peloton. Yeah, they're just not getting it together at the moment. It's uh, it's almost like a gentleman's excuse me as far as Marcel Kittel is concerned. He's already been back to the car as well, as if to issue a complaint and that's never a good sign um why if you're gonna speak to the car then get on the blower speak on the radio and have a chat i don't know why it went back it was no technical issue uh, brian it was basically just a um well clearly a problem of some sort yeah we don't know uh, that's the information we do not get but uh, sometimes it's easier to talk to your uh, sports director um, kind of face to face rather than uh, through the radio but this gap coming down so these uh, five riders in front of uh, Corin Allegert, Ryan does Backert and Cordy will be brought back and the uh, peloton still kind of bunching across the road nobody's taking it on full gas at the moment still a long way to go eight and a half kilometers but uh, there'll be a lot of uh, teams trying to get in order now I'm wondering whether a cheeky side bet wouldn't be uh, Richese today, then, if Kittle's not up for it. Uh, might well be a suggestion of that by the way that they're stacking up at the moment. Uh, their team does not look comfortable. But then again, there'll be some nerves out there because they want to function, especially in this kind of roster, if you like, of great sprinters. You have more than bragging rights here. It helps you measure your own form, especially with a Grand Tour still to come. Uh, which you'll be able to keep in touch with here on Eurosport, your home of cycling. Meanwhile, um, he was not content with the home within the breakaway. Our friend uh, Almar Reinders has decided to reimpose himself very late on. Nine seconds only back to the charging peloton. I think this um, is for the invisible and non-existent combativity award. Uh, there he goes. But at least he's keeping us uh, mentioning Rompot Nidlander. Here they come then, and they are in colour order. 7.6 kilometres to go. It's going to be a lively finish, Brian, we know. It, is, it always is uh, in this uh, finish at uh, Ardui. Over the last few years, Sagan won it uh, last year in a very messy sprint when the breakaway was caught in the finishing straight. Bonin won it in 2005 into 2014. Nasser Bahani won it. So the break is just about to be caught with uh, just over seven kilometres to go, although we've got a couple of them trying to kind of hang on. So it's going to be a very interesting sprint. But uh, can uh, the uh, team of uh, Quickstep Floors deliver Kittle for a potential victory? Are they going to continue to sit back? Just sitting in about uh, 20, 25th place at the moment, allowing the other teams to kind of dominate the front of the peloton. It's opened up with Quick Step, uh, with Katusha, I beg your pardon, going over to one side of the road, opening uh, a void into which has sailed Arnaud Damar and Francis Dejeu. He missed out last time by, and they're not going to do make the same mistake, I'm sure, this time. Well, sh we shall see, shall we? Look at this, they're leaning onto each other already and Quick Step trying to reassemble themselves and, and doing a decent job of it albeit with other teams in front of them just for the time being. Oli Nason from AFG Tour Le Mondial is in a good safe place as the rain starts to come down and strafe the lens here of uh, our uh, helicopter. 6.6 kilometres out 
and it's getting lively and Sky have decided that they are going to do a lot of chasing work. For Ricardo Minali it would be for Astana and uh, they've uh, got themselves up there just trying to uh, wonder as to um, I think there's just principles for deeper into this race, but they haven't got too many options, I'm afraid, because De Vries is almost a minute down after the time trial. Here we go. Uh, safety first then for some, but others have a sprint option today, and we'll see how it, this one plays out. UAE for the first time. Andrea Gardini, perhaps. Maybe Ben Swift or Marco Kump for them. So, we're on both sides of the road, and you can't play with this, and Kittel looks isolated, Brian. Yeah, Kittel is uh, right up towards the front now, in the middle of the picture. Sagan to the, uh, the left-hand side, he's got Bodnar in front of him, but uh, no teammates yet for uh, Kittel to, to help him. Uh, well, they're, they're, on uh, the, they're on the left-hand side of the road, doing it the, themselves. Kittel's on the right, isolated, and I think it might well be for Ricchesi today. Uh, we'll see, maybe he's been back and said, give the man a go. And he will. Well, tongue out. Um, hungry horse, styly. 5.5 uh, kilometres to go. And Trek doing the power work at the moment uh, for Boy Van Poppel. He had a, a decent finish fifth last time by. But here comes the yellow and black of Groenewegen and team Lotto Jumbo. Not to be outdone. Borrow want a part of this. And the German champion powers to the front. Of course, on behalf of Peter Sagan, Marcus Burkhardt laying it on the line with 5.2 to go. Now, this is about position. You've got to be in a good place. And as far as I can see, Marcel Kittel is in the wrong place at the moment. We'll see whether he suddenly reveals himself later on. 5.1 to go. The crucial point, Brian, is at 1.2 from home. I think the crucial thing as well is the, the, the roads are starting to get a little bit wet now. Yep. And that will cause a, a major problem, and everybody will know that. Uh, and it will string everybody out with that uh, left hand on the chicane. So it's very, very important now. Uh, it was already kind of dicey in the dry. Now the uh, the rain is coming down, and it makes the road surface a little bit wet. That adds a big big danger so you can just see the yellow jerseys of Groenewegen's team starting to come to the front so I think these teams will uh, come to the front uh, sooner rather than later because of the conditions now. Phil Bauhaus have got a great finish for the men in black and white team Sunweb and indeed they're starting to show their nose right now and there they are just ahead of the golden helmet of uh, Bahrain um, Marida at the moment Bahrain Marida uh, just working for Bola I believe 4.4 kilometres a little less than that right now the rain's coming down good and proper now a good handler is of course Peter Sagan we said if it was wet then he's almost a shoe in uh, there he is stalking as you can see in the uh, rainbow stripes of the world champion with two borough teammates uh, out in front of him now he can corner well he can hold the bike up when others are letting it go he's got this uh, nasty left hander coming up in just about uh, two and a half kilometers time then we have the chicane round the church and then the run for the line um, he's a man who often goes freestyle, Peter Sagan, and he won't burn his teammates too much. He'd rather see a clear view than the back end of one of his team. Well, he's doing the best thing now. He's right up there towards the front. He's sitting in third wheel, just coming up to this uh, first right-hander now. But uh, when I look, look at uh, where Kittel is, Kittel's not even in Whoa. the top 30. Look at how slowly they're taking this. I think Kittel struck himself out today. I think he's going to lead it to uh, Max Ricciesi to have a dig. And they pick it up on the exit. And there we are. My goodness, this is getting very sketchy. They don't trust the surface, Brian, that's the point. No, there's so many uh, white lines there. It's going to be a, a treacherous sprint, and uh, you have to really take this one from the front. And that's why Bodnar is uh, riding on the front in the uh, blue jersey, is the points jersey. Sagan sitting third wheel. It's a perfect uh, situation for them. Uh, you don't want to be uh, vying for position and having too many riders in front of you. Uh, but uh, I still think that uh, Bora Hansko needs uh, a bit more firepower as uh, Team Dimension data try to push coming up on the right hand side but in the middle you get Lars Baum of uh, Lotto and El Jumbo yeah I think uh, Andrea Gardini is going to have uh, a, a, a go today Francis is here working hard here I think maybe Gagneri I can't see Arno Demar just for the time being in fact now I can he's a, a French trickler just coming up um, and indeed steaming through with two teammates this uh, Arno Demar clearly fancied it he's not a bad um, he's a good bike handler himself Arno Demar he will uh, fancy having a go maybe somebody else some, somebody uh, further down the line for Rounders villains like Van Van Ert, the cyclocrosser in these kind of conditions who knows so uh, on the approach right now they've got about a race to the point I think it's fair to say 
say uh, with 2200 meters remaining they have essentially this is the flam rouge before the technical part if you see what i mean so a race before the race will really open up and that's the reason why the hurry up is on right now andre greifel won't like um this at all his cornering ability has uh, had some big question marks but he's getting himself into position right now and in fact he's up towards the four just on the other side just out of picture at the moment orica scott also here Kluger or Court Nielsen? Well, I said Court Nielsen, it could well be he today. 1.9 remaining, so about uh, uh, 700 metres remaining then until we take that pesky left-hander. And Sagan's in a near-perfect position, hoboing on somebody else's train. It happens to be Trek Sagafredo, he's behind. Yeah, but you can look at the helicopter shot there at DeMar. DeMar's not even in the top 20. A lot of these uh, sprinters kind of sitting back now. They know what's coming up. This is getting uh, very treacherous and, uh, you know, a big worry now as uh, Kito's been brought up towards the front and the left-hand side now. Set by Mark, big frame of he has come up to for Kerndale Draypack as well. We're well in the safety zone, but he wants to play the game. Gronewegen's uh, getting uh, dragged into position right now as well in the yellow and black of Lotto Jumbo on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, but uh, who's got what? And it looks like Bauhaus is uh, ready to invest. He's dead centre of your screen right now. There are others also coming to play. And strangely, Bert van Lerbecker, who doesn't mind these conditions uh, for top sport bladder. And there is uh, the turn at 1,500. We wait for the 1,200. In fact, I think that may well have been it. I think the ticker may well be out, Brian. Yeah, we're just coming into the chicane now uh, with the uh, quick step floors on the front. Uh, Lotto NL Yumbo just behind. And uh, you can now round this uh, with the... Uh, caution yes indeed that's the flam rouge by the way not 1.2 the ticker's wrong Don't. oh and it had to happen did it not touch of wheels at a crucial moment and there it is well we knew that the road surface was getting skittery there's the flam rouge and it's all opened up out front Gronewegen's in a great position uh, as we stand at the moment and they're starting to go for it, it is Richesia that's going to go for this uh, for quick set floors and Drucker just pales off the front and I think possibly sails away in diminished company here he's got a big chance yeah Drucker's going for it now everybody's looking around that, cro that crash and that uh, that uh, kind of crazy bit of the uh, finish has caused problems and now everybody is trying to get organised and it's uh, maybe a little bit too late. Yes, I think so. And Jempy Brooker, uh, Drucker's uh, sprung it. He's on that gentle uh, left-hand drive right now and I think it looks like everybody else has decided that there's no catching of Drucker. Uh, he's got about 250 metres to go. They're starting to pick up pace behind him. As you can see, Peter Sagan still very much has an interest. There goes Bauhaus as well, who's lighting it up. Sagan stays on Bauhaus's wheel. 250 metres, and I think Drucker's going to run out of pace here. Uh, Bauhaus picks it up, Sagan one side, they're going to spear either side of him. They put round Drucker right now, Sagan's got this by the looks of things. Who's he going to trace to the line? Nobody's going to get back at Sagan, I don't think. Oh, close it was with Rudy Barbier finishing nicely, but Peter Sagan raises his hand in the air. Well, Barbier comes up, offers him a handshake, but, well, in sketchy conditions, you need to be in the right place, and he was at the right time, and Sagan makes it two stage wins here on the Big Bank. Two in a row, 2016, he won it uh, and comes back again. And it was a uh, treacherous conditions there in the uh, finish, but uh, the world champion always gets the uh, the right wheels, puts himself in the right place. And uh, unfortunately for Drucker, it was just about uh, 100 metres uh, too long that to finish. But it was an intelligent attack. A lot of the uh, the sprinters were were well out of uh, position when they coming into that uh, left hand corner, and that crash caused problems and uh, the chicane. But uh, you had to do that on your own, and uh, we all know that uh, Peter Sagan is probably one of the best in the world at doing that. Lovely break turn there by Rudiger Zilic to uh, offer up his congratulations to Peter Sagan. I'd like to see that again. Here we are. Here's your overhead shot with Jempy Drucker, Drucker on the push. Yeah, I just thought that was it. You see, Master Seberg uh, was at the front there, but uh, I don't see uh, Greipo in the mix here. And uh, we said Trek Segafredo took it up. Uh, Gronewigan was there in the yellow, but uh, Bauhaus started on the right hand side, but uh, leading out to uh, Pires again. Pires again just going down the right hand side now. Bauhaus on the left. They pass their uh, Drucker. Barbier comes up uh, to take a, a very well deserved, looks like uh, second or third with the uh, Towns just on the right hand side. I think he just takes third as well there. So um, Gronewegen pushed out to, uh, I think, about fifth place there. But uh, a nice sprint again, right position uh, for the world champion for this again. <laughs> he does the job, doesn't he? And he does it very, very well indeed. The fans mobbing him. Meanwhile, out front, 
Well, uh, Peter Sagan held on, grit, determination, and dug very deep there. No sign of Marcel Kittel and Richese deciding that this wouldn't be his day. A few of the big, big names here as well. Um, caught out either by the crash or indeed deciding that um, it was too sketchy to impose themselves, Brian. Yeah, it's it was one of these sprints you had to take a, a chance and uh, be in the right place. And uh, Pires again is very good at that. Just looking at the uh, the photo for a second place there, very difficult to see from here between Barbier, uh, Barbier and uh, Toynes. I think it was um, uh, Shar actually, but uh, we'll have a look in a few moments. Shar. Yep. Uh, beg your pardon. Um, we'll see in a, in a moment. Ted Toynes. Um, yeah, Toynes yeah, and I, I was looking further back, actually. It was uh, Lloyd Vlaigen, I think, was involved. There he was, yeah. Uh, Vlaigen in fifth place. Excuse me. Uh, Peter Zagan, then, ahead of Toynes. Rudy Barbier. Dylan Groenewegen in fourth, ahead of uh, Vlaigen. Magnus Court Nielsen. Rickard Consoni. Zerbacher. And Phil Bauhaus. Well, um, considering the crop of sprinters we have, um, they were cast asunder, I think, possibly early on. Marcel Kittel clearly ducked out today. Very much looked like that. They never really got their act together. Uh, Riquezi was their, their best pro, uh, the, the best man, but uh, yeah, it's I don't know what's uh, what's up with them. They should have been uh, up towards the front, taking it from the front, and, and give uh, Kito an opportunity. They didn't do that, and a lot of questions will be asked. You, you, you win five uh, stages of the Tour de France and prove that you're pretty much the fastest in the world at this moment. And then you come to uh, this uh, World Tour race, which is important for quick step, and they never get it right again. So, um, mm. you know, you can just see Riquezi's in there, Greipo's just about in there, uh, Nason just uh, setting up uh, to see how uh, Barbier is getting on. But uh, Peter Sagan does it again, and he, he'll continue to do that. He, he pick at these opportunities that um, are, um, you know, sprints that really suit him, and this sprint really suits him. He won it last year, and he's won it again this year, where it gets very technical in the last kind of 1,200 metres. I enjoyed that. Good old day. Good sprint in the end. Mm. Uh, hard to tell what was happening because uh, of the crash in that corner, and um, people weren't in position, but it was the sort of sprint that you, you had to find your own way. And uh, we've said it again, he's one of the best at finding your own way. And he did it last year, although in different circumstances, done it again uh, this year again. So a good one for uh, Bora Hansgrohe and Sagan uh, again. And uh, yeah, where were all the other sprinters? Uh, indeed. Well, we've enjoyed ourselves today. I trust you have done too. It's, um, by the way, those asking about the uh, Kirby codec from the Tour de France, Ali Gaylor informs me that they have gone to the printers. So those of you that have indeed reserved your uh, rather fetching din and tea towel, it'll be uh, on the way soon. Meanwhile, back to reality, it was a very diminished group that duked it out for the sprint, right? 15. Ish. Yeah, it, it was Bauhaus who's uh, leading there coming around the corner. I still can't believe he got 10th uh, place, but uh, Groenewig in, uh, down the centre, but he just never had the power. Uh, one of the fastest in the finish was uh, Edward Toynes on the right-hand side. Uh, but uh, Sagan was already there. Uh, it doesn't matter how fast uh, Toynes was coming up. Very small bunch in the end. Uh, some riders there just trying to, to not lose any time, but I don't think that'll be an issue because of the uh, the, the crash in the, uh, in the chicane. So everybody will be given the same time. But just looking from, from behind there, uh, um, Kitro and, and many of the other sprinters were nowhere to be seen. Peter Sagan takes away the eyewear and then ponders what he's done today. I oh, did a lot, and hopefully you at home enjoyed it as well. We certainly did. Uh, the rain held off here. We had a bright start, gradually getting uh, more and more gloomy, but it was a, a fiery finish, was it not? And that chicane always going to loom large. And when the rain came, uh, became uh, more impactful. What a terrible word that is, but I'm going to borrow it from across the pond just for today. Well, Brian, what have we got to look forward to tomorrow? 154 kilometres of it. More sprinting? Yeah, let's hope so. Um, just looking at it now, uh, 154 kilometres, not so... 
so long a stage and um, yeah it would be a, an interesting one uh, to um, Lanikin and back to Lanikin the uh, finish looks as if it's a pretty much straight finish so we'll have to wait, wait and see but uh, I think uh, some more sprinters will have a little bit more pressure on them for tomorrow look forward to it